Hi, welcome to Toilet Training. This is an overview for caregivers. My name is Nicole Barnett. I'm a special education teacher and board certified behavior analyst. First, let's talk about some of the common problems when it comes to toileting. Um, your child may fall under one or more of these categories. So we have children who have no toileting skills at all, right? They might be young, um, they might be um, older. It um, doesn't quite matter the age, but this is something you need to um, figure out if your child doesn't have any of these skills and you'll start sort of from the beginning. The next is that your child might already be on some sort of schedule. So they may be schedule trained, but they don't initiate using the toilet on their own or request to use the toilet when needed. Another child may actually be able to urinate um, in the toilet, but is not yet bowel trained. You also have children who have something that we're calling diaper rituals, where perhaps they really only like to, use, to uh, have bowel movements when their diaper is on. You also have um, some children who are afraid to, to sit on the toilet. They may have um, had some more negative experiences in the past with toilet training, and now they're refusing to sit on the toilet at all. And then you have some school-aged children um, who you don't want to be wearing a diaper at night, um, but they're consistently having accidents in their bed throughout the night. And we'll go through each of these um, common toileting problems today. There are generally three components to toilet training. Um, the first you'll be doing is increasing their fluid intake. The reason why we do this is because we wanna start teaching and we wanna have a lot of teaching opportunities. Um, and so by increasing liquids, we'll have more opportunities for them to urinate on the toilet. The next is um, teaching your child to use the bathroom on a prompted schedule. So using the toilet um, on a consistent basis, you will be prompting them to do so and you'll be teaching them how to sit on the toilet and you'll be reinforcing them for voiding. And the next we'll go through is how to deal with accidents. There are a variety of ways to do this um, and I will be teaching one of those ways today. So increasing fluids. So first you're going to sort of pick out one or more of their favorite liquids. So this could be apple juice, this could be water, this could be you know anything that they really like that's gonna increase their uh, liquid intake. Um, liquids should be offered throughout the day as long as you're home and you're focusing on toilet training. Um, again, as I said before, it is to increase the toileting opportunities. The more opportunities we have to urinate, the more teaching opportunities are available. If you plan to leave the house, you wanna definitely taper off those liquids beforehand to either decrease the chances of having an accident or hopefully preventing them entirely. And then each day you're going to discontinue, oh, my mouse went, you're gonna discontinue um, any sort of high fluid intake at least two hours before bed. So here's the prompted schedule. We're going to use a timer. Timer is definitely something that will help you, um, though it is not required. Um, but even if you can set the timer on your stove or on your phone, um, you just want to establish a schedule. Now, at the end of each interval, and as far as the, the scheduled interval, I want you to start with at least 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, you're going to be taking your, prompting your child to ask to use the bathroom and prompt them to go to the bathroom. So at the end of each interval, so maybe the timer rings or you know it's at the end of each, you know, on the half hour, an hour of each um, um, hour, you're going to prompt your child to ask for the bathroom. So we're already teaching them how to request. So the request should be made with your child's communication system that they're using. So if your child is verbal, you can use a verbal bathroom. If they're a sign, then you would use whatever sign uh, you wanna teach them to sign for a bathroom, whether it's a, like this or it's an adapted sign. Whether or not they're using their speech generated device or PEC system, it doesn't matter as long as it's something that they're going to be using. 
Um, and then with this, you are, you can, because this is prompted and you are teaching, you can use a physical or ver visual or verbal prompts, right? To help them make the request. Um, and then from there, you're going to sort of motor your child to the bathroom. Your child then sits on the toilet for one to three minutes, okay? You wanna start teaching your child to sit on the toilet. And when I sit on the toilet, um, hopefully urination will happen. So if your child then urinates, and sometimes you really have to look closely because it could just be a little tiny bit, you want to reinforce your child immediately. This is giving them a reward for doing something, right? And so they're gonna learn, oh, what I did was good. So I'm gonna get something good. If your child sits but does not urinate, that is okay. You're not gonna give them that reinforcer or reward, but you're gonna say, it's okay. You didn't have to pee pee, we'll try again later. Okay, and then you're gonna resume your schedule. Dealing with accidents, um, we're not, going to um, do any sort of punishment procedures during accidents, which some uh, do teach this. Um, and it might be necessary for some cases, but not generally, right? So at the first sign of an accident, you're just gonna interrupt the child and say, no, you go pee pee in the toilet. And this is not to reprimand them. This is just supposed to be an obvious correction, like, oh, I didn't do something I was supposed to do. And then you're gonna guide the child to the bathroom, have them undress and sit on the toilet. And you're giving them another opportunity to now finish urination in the toilet. And if they do, you're gonna give them lots and lots of praise, okay? You don't have to give them, don't give them the reinforcer, that thing that you gave them for peeping the first time, but you're going to give them more of a social praise, hug, kiss, love, okay? And then you're gonna resume. So we have to fade prompts, right? Because we don't want our kids to be prompt dependent. So once your child is consistently using the toilet and, you're, and you've been prompting, you wanna start fading out the schedule a little bit. So maybe you're not going every 30 minutes, but you're gonna go every 45 minutes. Or if you're not going 45 minutes, you could sort of increase it as you see fit. Um, make sure it's not too long as to, um, you know, um, have any accidents, but you want to, make it a little bit longer so that they start to learn to hold their urine. And then we're gonna start focusing a little bit on um, them initiating next. So you're gonna also fade the use of your, their reinforcer. So maybe you're not gonna give them their favorite thing every time they go pee pee, but you might give it at the end of the day, like, oh, you stayed dry and used the bathroom all day. Here you get your favorite um, cookies or your favorite movie. If you've been having them just wear underwear. So this might be actually um, something that you wanna do so that you can really tell if, if your child's having accidents or not um, is have them wear just underwear. Gray works the best because you can really see when it gets wet. Um, but if you have been doing that, then you wanna start putting pants on them. And that's another way to fade. And then you're also going to cut back on fluid intake and, and not flood anymore. Don't have their favorite drink available all the time. Now we're going to start more of a natural um, bathroom schedule. So you um, now want to focus on teaching your child to initiate requesting. So either requesting or initiating using the bathroom on their own, right? So you're going to do this after um, your child gets used to the voiding and being reinforced for, for, for urinating. Um, and then as you gradually increase the time between toileting, you're going to have your child sort of near the bathroom. Sometimes we do like little walk bys, like maybe you don't put them in the bathroom, but you kind of go near the bathroom and see if they'll actually go in on their own, right? Um, or they'll request for the bathroom on their own. Um, and then at this point, you've stopped reinforcing for every void, but now you're going to start reinforcing for independent requests or independent initiation to use the bathroom, like just walking in and going to the bathroom on their own. If your child is bladder trained, yay, congrats, but they are not bowel movement trained, right? So they haven't they don't wanna do any um, BMs on the toilet, you're gonna set up something very similar to the urination schedule. So you'll sort of set a schedule, you know, when they use the bathroom usually. So you might have to track a little bit like, hmm, how often are they using the bathroom and around what time? 
and then you're going to have your child sit on the toilet for that period of a time. So for BMs, you're going to have them sit longer on the toilet, right? So maybe five to 10 minutes, maybe even longer. If they do um, void, right, have a BM, then of course you're going to reinforce. If they don't, similar to the urination, you're just going to say, okay, we'll try later or something along those lines. There's something that we're calling diaper rituals. So we have some children who really just refuse to have bowel movements in the toilet and they even request for the diaper when it's time to have a bowel movement. So there's a couple of things that we like to do. First, you wanna identify a strong reinforcer, something that the kid really, 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 really loves and you might even isolate it. So isolating means that they can only get access to this reinforcer, to this favorite thing when they have a bowel movement in the toilet or whatever your goal is, okay? And they can't have it at any other times. If your child requests a diaper for bowel movements, what you're gonna start, this is step one, is just require them, fine, give them the diaper, but they have to go into the bathroom to use the diaper. And then the next step would be once your child's doing that successfully is have them sit on the toilet while wearing the diaper, okay? And some have even cut a hole in the diaper so that they can see that um, their bowel movement is released into the toilet and this might get them used to that. Um, and you're gonna, again, you're gonna reinforce for each of these steps. So if your goal is to have them, you know, poop in the bathroom with the diaper on, then you're gonna reinforce them for doing that. The next goal is that they're going to sit on the toilet with their diaper on, then you're going to reinforce them for that and so on. Sometimes we have kids that just refuse to sit on the toilet. Again, it's because of possible, possibly um, some sort of aversion. So they have a negative um, uh, history with the toilet or perhaps they um, have anxiety because they've never done it before. Um, there's a variety of reasons that this can happen. So you're gonna have to actually teach your child to sit on the toilet. And your goal would be to have them at least sit for two to three minutes, right? But we're gonna start small. So first, again, you identify that reinforcer, that awesome thing that they love, and you may want to isolate it, okay? And then you're gonna slowly increase the time they're required to sit in the toilet and you're gonna start super duper short. You may even start just three seconds, right? And then you're gonna gradually increase the amount of time the child's required to sit in order to earn the reinforcer. So first let's sit and then they get their movie um, or their M&M or whatever it is that they're earning. Um, you can use a timer for this if it's helpful, or you can even count backwards. So if your goal is three, then you're going to count backwards and see, okay, sit, let's sit down three, two, one. Okay, good, get up and here's your M&M. If it's 10, you would go from 10. Okay, we're going to sit for 10 seconds. Let's sit down 10, nine, eight, etc. Okay, and it's going to help them understand. Another common problem we have is bedwetting, right? So you have either a school-aged child um, or a child you think is ready to stop wearing diaper at night, and um, but they're doing a lot of bedwetting. So some common approaches include, this is a must for strict fluid intake after dinner, so at least two hours before bedtime. Another option is waking the child up throughout the night to void, so you may know when they're having their um, accidents and you might just um, do more of a preventative measure. So either if you're waking up every two hours and having them void. Um, another uh, common approach is using, pot, using reinforcement for remaining dry at night. This should be a must anyway um, for the beginning, right? So they wake up in the morning, whether or not you've been waking them up throughout the night to void and restricting, all these three things can be done together. So if they wake up in the morning and they're dry, they should get some super duper 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 awesome thing for doing that, okay? Some other less um, common approaches is this use of a bell and pad device. And it's just sort of is a pad that you put on the bed and it sounds an alarm when the bed gets wet. Um, and then it's supposed to teach the child to um, learn to get up on their own to use the bathroom. So as soon as they get, starts to get a little wet, the alarm sounds and they go and finish in the bathroom. 
Um, another, um, you know, more less common approach is use of medications, which is something that you would have to discuss with your medical care provider, pediatrician. So how are we getting started? Um, here's a quick supply list, right? So you wanna have your favorite drink for flooding. Um, just a tip, salty snacks, right? So salty snacks increase thirst and then fluid consumption. So a lot of times when I do potty training, I make sure to have some salty snacks out and ready. Um, you wanna pick your, re your rewards. They're called reinforcers. So your favorite, your child's favorite items snacks, activities, and you're gonna use those to reinforce for all the stuff that they're learning. And then you wanna have on hand many different changes of clothing and underwear ready and available. And then you could have a timer and that's something that's optional, right? So sometimes this stuff doesn't work and you you know need a little bit more guidance or specific detailed plans for your child or even just simple troubleshooting, right? Please feel free to contact me and I will help you um, with some of the issues that you may, that might come up. Um, sometimes we need more individualized plans and that's okay. Um, again, you can contact me at nbarnett2 at schools.nyc.gov for a little bit more support and um, lots of luck to you. Thanks.